Hi, I'm Andrew with Infinity Cutting Tools. As woodworkers, we all have a desire to work with large pieces of material like this live edge slab to make furniture like this coffee table that I recently finished. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I go about flattening this slab using nothing more than a homemade planing sled, a Triton three and a quarter horse plunge router, and an Infinity Tools Mega Dado and Planer router bit. To flatten a slab, we need two main components. First of all, we need the planing sled and we need a good router. The sled itself is simply a couple of boxes. The first is a box that surrounds the slab and provides a set of rails that are a flat surface. The sled bridge holds the router and allows it to travel back and forth across the slab and it references off of the sled box. Once we have our sled built, we can put our slab inside of it, level it up. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute and go about flattening our slab. The sled itself is very simple construction. I simply made it from MDF. This is three quarter inch MDF and it actually only took me one sheet for my slab. I used pocket screws and a Craig K4 pocket screw system to build the sled. Makes it very quick and easy to build and when I'm all done I can use the MDF for other jigs, fixtures or projects because I don't flatten slabs on a regular basis. Probably the most important part of this entire project is a good router. I'm gonna be using my Triton three and a quarter horse plunge router with an Infinity Mega Dado and Planer router bit. I also have an Infinity large router base plate so that my router stays nice and secure and is supported in my planing bridge. The final piece of the puzzle is a router collet extension. Because I have to reach through the base plate and through three quarters of an inch of MDF of my planing bridge just to get to my slab, I'm gonna need a little extra depth of cut. That's where the router collet extension comes into play so I can reach nice and deep and get to my slab once I've planed off the high spots. With everything assembled, we can go about flattening our slab. The way everything works together is the box surrounds the slab, the bridge sits over top of it, and the router slides within the bridge. You can see I'll simply pass the router all the way across and back. One key thing that I've done is draw lines on one edge of my sled box. These lines are at one inch increments and they're gonna allow me to index the sled bridge down the slab every time I make a pass. I have a pair of simple spring clamps to help hold my sled bridge in place so it doesn't move around while I'm making my cuts because almost no slab that you'll find will be perfectly flat. If it was, we wouldn't need to flatten it. We're gonna to have to do some shimming inside of our planing sled to make sure that we remove the least amount of material possible from our slab. To do this, I actually start with pieces of MDF. They're nice and consistent in thickness, and I can use them as shims at the corners of my slab. You can see I've got one shim under this corner and actually two shims under this corner. The reason for that is this slab has about three quarters of an inch of twist over its length. My goal here is to make sure that my low corners match each other and my high corners match each other. To check my progress, I simply use a ruler and the planing bridge as my guide. I measure from the bottom of the planing bridge to the top of the slab. I got lucky today and I only needed pieces of three quarter inch MDF to do my shimming. If I wanted to fine tune this more, I could use just a regular wedge style shim in between the slab and the planing sled. You may also notice that I have 
a strip of MDF inside my planing box. This strip is loose within the box and it goes from one edge of the box to the other. This is my base shim and it ensures that the entire slab cannot slide back and forth inside the planing box while I'm routing. The final piece that I want to add is to capture my slab to keep it from sliding back and forth and all I do is take another piece of MDF, put it on top of my stack so that it pushes against the edge of my slab, screw it down, and now my slab cannot move. Before I get started, I want to talk a little bit about the router bit speed and depth of cut that I'm going to be using. I found that in red eucalyptus, which is a pretty hard and tough wood, that the router and the bit like to run at a speed around 16,000 RPM. This is roughly midway between top speed and low speed on a variable speed router. I'm actually set right at three on the Triton router with a scale of one to five. I'm also going to be taking passes of about one inch wide. This is a two inch diameter bit and I found that that one inch wide pass is perfect because it eliminates any climb cutting issues. I'm always going to be making a push cut with the router bit. I'm also going to be making my cuts about one eighth of an inch deep. I may start a little bit deeper at three sixteenths at the very beginning because I'm only going to be removing a few high spots. But once I start removing any bulk of material, I'm going to reduce my depth of cut to about an eighth of an inch per pass. I've got the first side of our slab completely flat. Now I'm ready to flip the slab over, re-shim, and get to work on the other side. those two. Thank you. 
I've got my slab flipped over, repositioned, and I went ahead and re-shimmed the slab. This time, because the bottom of my slab is flat, I'm using the same number of shims under each corner. This ensures that the bottom of the slab is parallel with the top of my sled box, and I should get a nice, consistent thickness slab. And now I can go ahead, start cutting at the high spots, work my way down just as I did with the first side, and end up with a nice, smooth, flat slab. I just wanted to take a minute before I got all cleaned up to show you or explain why I decided to wear a respirator type mask versus a regular paper mask. Well, a paper mask would probably have been just fine for the size of particles of sawdust that I was creating. I find that the respirator type mask is more comfortable to wear for extended periods of time. I actually can breathe a little more freely when I'm wearing this mask and I get a better seal all the way around my mouth and nose when I'm wearing this type of mask. Here's our finished product. The slab is nice and flat, ready to be cut to size and sanded. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as we take this slab and turn it into a shaker inspired table. Also be sure to check out our blog for more information on flattening a slab as well as all the other projects and tools that we use here in the Infinity Tool Shop. Be sure to check out our Facebook page and give us a like so you can stay up to date on the latest that's going on here at Infinity.